Good afternoon, Mr. Scheib. Good afternoon, Judge. I expected that the public defender was going to be here. This was set for two. It's 157. And I'll call the case. We'll just talk about a couple of preliminary matters. This is file 201588SM. It's a very old case. Uh, three and a half years old. Um, has quite a history. You're in custody on this, on a child support matter, and a fail to appear or fail to pay in circuit court. Have you dealt with those other matters? Yeah, yes, sir, I have. So has the friend of the court seen you on the non-support? No, she has not yet, sir. Has Judge, I requested has Judge to see, you. see you? Yes, he has. What did he give you, a day credit, a day or he something? Me, no, he gave me five days and told me that I needed to pay before the next month. He gave me five days. And, All right. And you've yet to see the front of the court? Um, yet to see them, yeah. Yes. All right, our chief public defender, Mr. Stickley, is joining us. Uh, he was here yesterday when we did this, and uh, he is back. Uh, Mr. Stickley, uh, Mr. Scheip has two other matters uh, of circuit court show cause, and Judge Stutzman gave him five days, so he apparently has four more days to do on that, and he has to deal with a non-support matter from the front of the court. Uh, this case, as I said, has quite a history. It was originally charged for an incident that occurred in June of 2020 with aggravated assault, which is a misdemeanor punishable by up to a year in jail. Um, the matter was reduced by the prosecutor to a charge of assault and battery. And uh, I gave a jail sentence, I think, originally of 12 days and ordered restitution. The defendant was placed on probation, didn't pay the restitution. Probation was revoked. He did an additional 82 day, 81 days in jail. So he's done 93 days, which is the statutory maximum of the offense. And then several other attempts to collect uh, with show cause power has resulted in, I believe, another five days. So I think he spent about 98 days in jail on a 93-day misdemeanor, and his probation was revoked. He has financial obligations in the circuit court. He also has... Uh, child support issues. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Schultz, I don't know if you saw any of the feed from yesterday. Uh, Mr. Scheip at this point indicated he's essentially homeless. He lost his job when I gave him 90, 81 days in jail. Has been struggling to get back on his feet since that time. Is that accurate, Mr. Scheip? Yes, sir, it is. All right, Mr. Schultz or Mrs. Schultz, you can come have a seat up here if you'd like to. Is there anything else you'd like me to know? Well, it's... Why don't you come up here where I can see on the camera and I can hear you. Well, I think it's a little ridiculous that he hasn't been able to find a job or anything, you know. I mean, there's been plenty of jobs out there, you know, for him to just ignore everything, you know. And uh, I'm just fit to be tied. At this particular moment. Well, all right. They've been upset about this since the prosecutor reduced the charge, but you can't go to jail for being poor. Um, now, you can go to jail for failing to appear, um, and eventually you got picked up on this. I've given you the statutory maximum allowable time on the sentence. 
I have had three or four show cause hearings in an attempt to collect without any success. Presently, you don't have any money. You're not collectible. And I can't, by law, sanction you for not paying if you don't have the ability to pay. So as a practical matter, you're probably never going to get any money out of Mr. Scheib. Uh, drag his ass in court every well, time you I can, do run. Well, I'm not going to do it anymore. You can sue him. You can convert this into a money judgment and try to collect him. But I'm not going to keep throwing him in jail because he doesn't have the ability to pay on your debt. Uh, so you're free to go. Uh, so I'm going to order uh, the additional jail time. You're going to be in for five more days as it is. I'm going to give two days jail credit, two days. You aren't going to get out because Judge Stutzman still has a hold on you. But you certainly aren't going to get any money if you don't get a job. And as a practical matter, if you get a job, they're going to take your money for child support. You also owe criminal money to the circuit court. You don't have any money to give to the Schultzes. And so he's mad. He continues to be mad. But I'm not going to keep locking you up, taking jail bed space uh, for money that essentially isn't going to be able to collect. You've got 100 days on a 93-day misdemeanor. I can't do really any more. So two days, credit two days. I find you're in contempt. But you're no longer on probation. I've only allowed probation for two years. I revoked your probation and gave you the maximum allowable sentence. Um, so I'm sorry, Ms. Schultz. There's really nothing else I can do. He's still mad. May I say something? Yes. Do I need to come up? Yes, please. <clears throat> so he claims he did have a job that he lost because of this, but he wasn't making payments then. So he never had the intention of paying. You're probably correct. You know, and I think it's horrible that the court allows all these pleas and getting uh, out. Let me, let me stop you from that. I didn't allow the plea. That no, was the, the prosecutor. prosecutor did. All right. Well, I didn't have anything to do with that. I gave him the maximum allowable sentence. Now, what do I want to do? Go punch him in the nose? There's nothing else I can do to him. I mean, they've made false statements to the police uh, about uh, me. Um, and I understand you're upset about it, but I don't, you can, this is not a civil judgment. It's a criminal judgment. And he probably did not have any intent to pay. So I gave him the maximum allowable jail sentence. Uh, this is a criminal court, not a civil court. Um, and I didn't make the plea agreement. And he didn't get any good time. He served more than the maximum allowable time. But as a practical matter, you're wasting a lot of energy and emotional capital on a debt that's probably never going to be paid. You can convert the criminal conviction into a civil recovery, but you're not going to get any money anyway. He doesn't have any money. And he owes money to the circuit court, and he owes money to the friend of the court. So... I don't. I understand you're unhappy about it, but I don't have a better answer. But I'm glad you're here, and I wanted you to have an opportunity to be here before I did anything. Mr. Scheip, when you're done with the circuit court sentence, you can be released, and if they lift the front of the court hold. All right, you're free to go. All right, can I just say something on my behalf? Yes. Um, I, I've I've lost more than what everybody sees or, or, or anything like that. I, when, when I was sent to jail, I, I lost my home. I lost my vehicle. I lost my family all because of this. I don't know what else. It well, that's apparently not enough for Mr. Schultz. So, uh, I don't know what to say. Hopefully when you can get out, you can start from here and you can only go up from here. Yeah, because my husband has a lifetime of pain and suffering. So. Yeah, so there's enough to go around. All right, you're free to go. Sometimes there's no good answer to a question.
And, uh, but that completes this matter. Thank you, Mr. Stickley. Have a good day.